Hello and welcome to No CB, a grand strategy podcast. Um, uh, after uh, after resolving some technical issues, I am your host TJ Hafer. Uh, Rose was supposed to be starting uh, her break uh, with maternity leave with her heir coming in uh, to keep the succession safe later this week, but actually had to jump on and teach us how to fix voice meter again. Uh, so <laughs> now exactly right now is when that's going to be starting. So she'll be, uh, off the show for, for a little while here. Um, she'll be in a maternity we- ward, like giving us tech support next week. That's <laughs> <what's gonna laughs> exactly. Be well, probably, I mean, based on my history, her, her kid, her newborn could probably figure out voice meter better than I could <laughs> for some reason <laughs> be in that program. Just always seem to have problems. Uh, but I'll be here. Also here will be our friend Lambert. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, our friend Father Loris. Hello. And joining us this week, uh, special guest Benjamin Magnus. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce oh. yourself again? Let's try this uh, take two. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I am Benjamin Magnus. Uh, I've been a content creator, mostly playing Paradox games for six years now. And as of February, I am the community ambassador for Europa Universalis 4. Excellent. And uh, we so what I guess before we get started with Dev Diaries, like usual, what is a what does a community ambassador actually do in regards to Paradox? I get that question a lot, and it's it's a mixed bag, really. It's a lot of little things. Uh, I would say the biggest task is taking all of the input from all of the Internet and boiling it down into useful feedback that I can pass on to the devs. Cool. So basically and, collating the the information from, you know, just you know, the Internet, just the Internet and, yeah. and, and turning it into something useful, like filtering <laughs> out all the rage and all the and all the not useful information, giving them the good yeah. things that they can work with. Sounds super yeah. easy. Barely. An <laughs> oh, yeah, totally easy. Now, yeah, it doesn't require any any experience whatsoever. And it's, it's, it seems like refining, so, refining diamonds yeah. from just massive steaming piles of shits, basically. That's what <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I don't, don't don't get me started. Like, um, I was on the job for a few weeks before I was like, you know what? I'm going to dip my toe into the steam section of things. <laughs> oh I'm my gonna goodness! Look, I'm going to look at what's being said on Steam right yeah. now. And uh, I went to the moderator panel for EU4 on Steam and I think I had 27,000 flagged messages on there and I was wow. like, oh, oh no. no. Oh, and I no. looked at a few of them and I was like, oh, my heart. It hurts. <laughs> and, I- and, and then I went and I talked to like the Steam moderation team and they're like, oh no, those are the, the flagged comments from all of EU4's history going back seven years. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay, oh that's thank not too bad. God. Although no. it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't just like a day, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had a uh, panic attack for a little while there. I was like, I don't know. I'm never going to be able to moderate this. And and then and then I realized, okay, well, it's not that bad. That's all of time. And you just take them as a little bit as they come in. That's yeah. Right. That's not too bad. It's I mean, like reading I, I, a novel of complaints. I can hardly criticize when we on this very podcast spent about 45 minutes talking about how we didn't like the flag for revolutionary Great Britain. So no, nobody <laughs> likes the flags for revolutionary anything. Well, I think my, my argument was more I don't like revolutionary Great Britain in general, but the flag is also <laughs> bad. Some countries just shouldn't be able to be revolutionary. That's just what that's I'm going with that. Well, on one of the last dev diaries where we we went through that we were changing some of the stuff you could do with custom nations. People, everybody was like, "Oh, cool! You could do things with uh, custom nations. How about you let us make a revolu- custom revolutionary flag so it's not heinous?" Yeah, yeah, that would be no, fifty cool. percent yeah. of the comments. You should you yeah. should collate those comments and then pass them on to the devs. That's your job, right? <laughs> yeah, I I I can ass- I can assure you, I told them that that was a thing that people wanted, but that's where my job ended. I don't know where it gotcha. went from there. That's where my job ends. So if it's not implemented, you're solely to blame. It's, basically. Yeah, it's you weren't convincing fault. enough. That was definitely. Well, and by extension, yeah. the internet wasn't convincing enough. So internet, start convincing harder. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a good one. Make Ben's job everywhere. harder is basically what we're asking. Yeah. <laughs> if if uh, you definitely. could just like sort of 
you know, type with sort of unfiltered rage into the Steam Caps comments. Lock really <laughs> helps. Just, just more unfiltered rage. That's definitely what I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, honestly, all- though, it's uh, for 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 everything that gets thrown at Paradox, EU4 is pretty tame. Yeah, compared yeah. Compared to other brands. I yeah. can imagine Stellaris Mobile being one of the harder community ambassador jobs. What yeah. it, no, not my monkeys, not my circus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I would not I would not take that job for any well, I don't want to say any amount of money, but uh Are yeah. you sure? Are you sure about that? <laughs> There's pro- there do, is an I amount like of money. money. <laughs> There is an amount of money that would get me to sh- to shill for Stellaris Galaxy Command, but uh, I'm not I'm not going to disclose at least five pounds. Oh, yeah, I am it's- totally way corrupt. Like I'll I'll shill for anything. <laughs> well, that's that's what everybody told me when I when I finally got uh when I, when I actually got hired by Paradox because I had been the, the process took let's see October November December January took five months so I was sitting wow. on that secret for five months and um just just absolutely itching to tell everybody and. And once it actually happened, I got to tell everybody in my community, the, the general reaction was like, really? Have, do they know who you are? <laughs> and, yeah. I, and my my response was, yes, shockingly, they knew who I was and they hired me anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. See, I, I, I don't know if you guys have ever watched any of my stuff personally, but I I am vocal about things when oh, I yeah. don't like them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess I, they just recognize that it's constructive uh, criticism instead of twenty-seven thousand pages of rage. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's something Paradox seems to be pretty good at: is identifying when someone is being harsh but fair versus just you know trolling, more or less. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, we do have some you for to talk about in a little bit, but as usual, we are going to start with Crusader Kings three since that is the new hotness. Um, and we got one of my favorite dev diaries so far, because I'm a map geek, um, which is all about the map. Uh, we got some uh, info on the different terrain types and how they're going to affect combat and things like that. Um, especially this wetlands, uh, plus 25 retreat losses, I think is going to be pretty significant. <laughs> like if you oh, lose yeah, a battle, massively. if you lose a battle in a swamp, you're going to not really have a good day. Um and then obviously, you know, the terrain affects development growth. Seems pretty familiar if you've played Imperator. And then uh, we got to look at um, some areas of the world that we haven't seen too much of yet. Uh, what did you guys think about this one? Anything stick out in particular? Uh, so what do we what do we think about this new dev diary then? Uh, they changed the flag of, of England uh, to be a, a white dragon on a red background. And uh, if anyone knows... What my channel's, you know, profile picture is, you know, I'm totally okay, in favor so of this. I think we're having some audio I that, issues because um, I, I can't it's hear It's the you guys, of Middlesex, you and you'll be me. able to see it there. Um, oh, let me, let me, let me see. Oh, cool! Please. Is that historical then? Yeah. OBS, real quick. Yeah. It's like the. It's the first picture in the main dev diary on like the the CrusaderKings.com, but. For um, for the oh, forms, you, it looks like oh, it's you're the talking second. about the Dijur hierarchy here. Uh, that one there, yeah, yeah. Earldom of Middlesex. Okay. It's no longer three lions; it's like a white dragon, and that pleases me very much. Is that more historically accurate? Uh, they both they both have historical precedent, but this would be okay. the more Anglo-Saxon one, whereas the three lions were. Oh yeah, I mean, they, they exist at the time, but yeah, it's like normal. Yeah, flag. It, it's it it definitely feels more accurate and it Excellent. better. Um, the other big change that we had with this dev diary as well was uh, the the map and just the, the map with the the paper and the, the uh, sea monsters. So yeah, oh, I've yeah. been wanting to talk about this ever since Paradox gone, um, because the map is. Gorgeous. It was in early development at ParadoxCon, but when we scrolled out, stuff we can't see on this map too. Um, it's like, oh well. At least when I saw it, it was like a beautiful dragon over in the like in the far east, like next to China. It was gorgeous. There were sea monsters all over the place. It is absolutely stunning. The entire map is is gorgeous, and now they've refined it 
beautifully. I mean, look at all the details. Look at the ocean. It looks stunning. I don't know what that creature is. Is it a wyvern? I don't know. The sort of mermaid <laughs> lion thing. It's not yeah. a wyvern, but <laughs> mermaid yeah, thing. I mean- I love that. Uh, yeah, I love that you can zoom in and have it look really realistic, or you can zoom out and have it look like a map that is from like this time period. That's, yeah, um, yeah, same. It's it's like yeah. Endless Legends had a similar sort of thing too, which was absolutely stunning. Yeah. What what so. I want to do is just for people to mod the game to be, you know, fourteen forty four starting setup and just take a picture of it. I, I want to see this map for all of their games. Just yeah, all of them. absolutely mod the game so it's like the Imperator startup and then just take yeah, a picture of it you don't need to play it just take a picture <laughs> <laughs> well any sort of thematic map like this I, I, I adore like if, if Imperator had like a sort of Roman thematic map it would be absolutely gorgeous if you zoomed out just be like, yeah. you know I just the, love it. This, it really gets you immersed into the game too I mean this this screenshot is like perfect for um, Reddit's uh, subreddit r slash map porn because it really is map porn it is one hundred percent is. Though I'm a little bit saddened to see that they're still calling the Eastern Roman Empire Byzantium. I, I don't like that. I want it to be, you know, <laughs> named properly and, and yeah. not heretically. Yeah, Ottomans. Oh, now you just made an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rivalry declared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Empire, it's Holy War now. Uh, no, but it should be called, you know, either Roman Empire, Eastern Roman Empire, Basilia Roman uh, Empire, of the Romans, something like that. Something that they call themselves, not something that some dude in the 1800s came up with. Like, uh, it's, it's it's not it's not a period accurate name. Hmm, I don't know, about it, actually. I don't know. I, I I don't know much about Byzantium, but. Or I Eastern mean, Roman Empire. Yeah, it was, it was it a normal Byzantium to, conversation now. That's how it is. Yeah, nobody, it started to nobody get referred to as Byzantium purely Empire, because yeah. the Eastern Roman Empire wanted to say, oh, we're the only Roman Empire. And like that happened after Byzantium was already annexed by the Ottomans. Like They just tried to erase their history. And I, I really don't like that they've succeeded. Yeah, so, no, nobody who lived in the Byzantine Empire... Called it the Byzantine Empire. <laughs> so. Exactly. I like Valagain's comment there. Every second statement from Lambert, I cheer, and every other one, I boo hard. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect balance. <laughs> All right. So where were we? <laughs> uh, we were talking about CK three ish. Oh yeah, definitely. The, the map. It's it's great. The map is just phenomenal. Like uh, can't be complained about. Um, Sweet. So TJ, uh, for for us three, um, what what did you say? Like all of it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, if you're listening to this on audio earlier, uh, I I really just I, I think the uh, voice meter just has like some sort of personal issue with me because it always seems to screw up my sound when I I have it running. It could be that I'm telling it to output audio to Discord and Audacity and OBS all at the same time and it just doesn't play nice with that but um all of it all of what i said uh we talked about terrain i think uh wetlands you're gonna lose a lot of guys if you lose a battle in a swamp um oh yeah it's gonna be grim i really like wetlands the idea of it because it doesn't give you any sort of combat bonus it just makes your losses so much worse (laughs) Right, yeah. which is interesting. I don't think they've done that with terrain before in a no, I don't think so. Yeah, in another paradox game. Um, yeah, and uh, then the context sensitive selection thing, which uh, they talked about a little bit, uh, where if you have something selected, it'll update the map. Like if if you have a religion selected. It'll take you to the religion screen and stuff. So little little quality of life stuff like that is cool. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. There's also map modes, and he does say later in the comments as well for this one, uh, counties. Um, highlighting individual counties and the respective color is one of the map modes. This also counts for duchies, kingdoms, and empires as well. Um, he confirms that later on in the dev diary, but unfortunately Sweet. not here. I uh, got a simple terrain map mode as well, government map mode, development map mode. I feel like there are some missing. Um, is there is there any map modes that you're like looking at the, this list and thinking 
but why don't I have this one? Oh, I'm, oh, there's plenty. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I love about the older Paradox games. Where, uh-huh. you know, the current generation we're playing right now, CK2 E4, is there's so many map modes. E4 has dozens of yes. them. Yes. And there's always one. There's always a map mode for something you're looking for, even if it's not on your hot bar and you're not using it constantly. Every once in a while, you're going to need to look at that specific map mode. It's going to be there. And um, like what, like when Imperator came out, it had very few of them. Hearts of Iron Four doesn't have very many of them. I would I always like more map modes than fewer map modes because even if you're not using them all the time, you're going to want them eventually. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, I think I think uh, EU four is like the gold standard of map modes now. Actually, for Paradox games, I don't think anyone, anything else yeah. comes even close. Yeah, I, I I want like forty map modes. Like I don't want yeah, I don't yeah. want or two. <laughs> I want like as many map modes as you could throw at me. I want to add, add a customize them too. Like in EU four, it's yeah. wonderful. A customizable map mode where you just go into like the trade goods thing, and then you can set all of the different variables you want and then it'll just spit out a map mode like um like distance from prague map mode that that would be pretty good <laughs> wouldn't it <laughs> <Kigao? laughs> yeah exactly um yeah i mean direct vassals i think is one that that i, oh, I can yeah. immediately see is missing i um, assume the direct vassals are going to work the way it has in the recent ck2 where you hold down control and click on the independent realms in it See, down. I had no idea about this control click thing until I read it in the comments. That was like yes. eye opening for me. It's wonderful. So I always use it, especially if you're playing like the Holy Roman Empire, right? Where it's like I don't care what the other direct vassals are for, like some shit state like England or something. You know, <laughs> I only care about the HRE's direct vassals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, there's there's some that are missing, but. I, I'm sure like more map modes can be added pretty simply and easily and quickly. Is there I a dynasty so. map mode? Or what was that on the list? There is a dynasty map mode, yeah. Houses. Um, That's good. Yeah, it's or, called yeah, houses. houses. Yeah. Houses. Which is basic. Okay. I mean, it's a houses map mode, but it's part of the Jimena dynasty. So I guess it's like the full yeah. thing. It's not, it doesn't uh, take the, the branches into effect. Mm-hmm. The way the fact that it's called houses makes me think that it will show cadet branches. Okay, uh, probably in a different color or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Or a like related have a color name. would be pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's something well, just subtly different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could I could see that being a thing. That's what um, I always do with um, client states in T4. Make it my my state's color, but slightly slightly different. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's what uh, Imperator's going to be adding in the next update as well. Right. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. We'll still uh, yeah. yeah, so anything else about uh, this this map diary before we uh, move on to EU4? It was a short dev diary, but probably one of my favorites. Yeah, like it was short, but it's like there's so much to unpack that it didn't feel short. <laughs> And then well, just this paper map again, just oh, yeah, so, it looks so, so good. good. That's the thing you could stare at that for hours. It is it yeah. is really, really, really good art. What, and when I first saw the paper map mode, I didn't know. Like at first, I was like, okay, it's a glamour shot of the game that somebody made. And then when I was reading it, it was like that is an actual dynamic map mode that you see in the game. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. on board. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want that on Just my wait wall. until you see it in game too, because even like at ParadoxCon, when you zoomed out and it transferred, it was completely seamless and and it is just stunning. Like it's completely gas. You know the first time you scroll out of Imperator and you see the, the world's curved? Yeah. It's yeah. that sort of similar, like, oh wow. It's amazing. I wonder if they'll do something similar in CK3. It doesn't look like it. It does, yeah, it, does, it looks flat to me. Uh, the orientation's yeah. different. Like Italy is a lot more horizontal than I'm used to it being in other paradox games. Because <laughs> uh, usually it's it, it's more like Italy is like the axis of the world, and it doesn't look like they've done that here. So yeah, um, exactly. They yeah. should have done the map of Mundi. That's what they should have done. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That was a great. Yeah, that was great. Um, that was a great map. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Hold yeah. on. I'll, I'll link it to you now, Lambert. Yeah. <laughs> Pull that up on stream. That's how this CK2 map should look. 
Oh wow! Yeah, if you if yeah, you're ever no, fortunate this... enough to find yourself in Hereford, go uh, go check that out. It's really really beautiful. Oh yeah, no, there, I didn't even I didn't realize you were talking about the real one because there was actually a mod for it was either CK two or EU four. There was a Mappa Mundi mod that actually made the map look like this style. Really? I didn't know that. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh my god, this is a big... If you'd have given this to TJ, his computer would have died. <laughs> <laughs> this image is colossal. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to find uh, Britain, it's in the bottom left. Totally um, readable map. Bottom left. Oh yeah, extremely. Yeah, the gothic black letter. Yeah. Am I in the bottom left? Oh yeah, I am now. You see that island? Oh, there. That looks like a Britain-sized shape. And then there's a little little <laughs> island. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. you see, totally. You can see Norway yeah. up there with a bear. Like Channel like, Islands <laughs> absolutely got a big upgrade. <laughs> I did, didn't it? That's, that's definitely what the world looks like. That is definitely yeah, real. Mm. Yeah, that's, this is yeah, where I use my A to Z. Like, yeah. if I want to find myself to, like, go to Newcastle or something, I get crack over map of Monday. <laughs> yeah, In exactly. fairness, though, why would you ever want to go to Newcastle? Yeah, Just that's asking. a good point. Well, that's yeah. the intention, so I intentionally get lost and don't go to Newcastle. <laughs> True. Fair enough. <laughs> Newcastle looks better on this map than anywhere else. That's <laughs> true. That's true. My only Look, point of reference from... for yeah, Newcastle as an American is the beer, so... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Anyone yeah. from Newcastle Spruce get really offended, I'm from Middlesbrough. It's my job to shit on you. <laughs> <laughs> You're all Geordies in the end. I'm not a Geordie. I'm not a Geordie. <laughs> We're learning so oh. much about like just weird intra-UK rivalries from this show. Yeah, I know, really. I didn't know that it's like city... It's like I didn't know cities in, in the UK hated each other like oh, this. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Straight I'm from up. New York. New York hates New Jersey, but that's because New Jersey is just a festering, you know, dumpster. Um, and, <laughs> but that's just New, that's that's New Jersey. Everybody hates New Jersey. And now I live in Florida, and in Florida is you know the same. So everybody that, makes but, fun of Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even we do. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. I mean, it's a, it's not a far trip. I mean, in the, in the UK, we're just united in hatred of London. Like, if you're not from London, you hate London. That's, well, that's the one thing. I, for us, it's it more just us together. Fucking southerners, like in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter if you're from you're London right, or Essex, you're all just fucking southerner, mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, you're, if you're south of Middlesbrough, that's it. <laughs> <So, laughs> <laughs> oh my it's, god, it's, it's the Watford Gap, isn't it? I was say, I feel like a Scot somewhere is rolling over in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Scotland and the North have a lot of things in common. Yeah, something, hating something southerners. Adrian's wall. <laughs> yeah, we're all Geordies in the end, all the Scots. Yeah. Pretty much the same. <laughs> Geordies are horrifying insults. Like you can't just be throwing it around like this. <laughs> we're what, all Geordies. <laughs> I knew. I knew that we were just going to end up in like deep, deep tangent territory the second Rose left. But <laughs> what, what she, actually, does Rose normally keep you guys on target? She tries. Yeah, that, uh, that is... <laughs> what, uh, what exactly is a Jordy for those of us who might be completely... Uh, no, it's I'm literally lost. just someone from Newcastle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So right. why is it called, why is it called like a, a Newie or something then? Because that's too simplistic that and would very American. Sense. And there's probably <laughs> some sort of weird archaic Anglo-Saxon reason they're called yeah. Geordies. Yeah, like uh, from people from Middlesbrough are called Smoggies. Um, um, people from uh, Birmingham is the the one that everyone knows. It's very it's like insults easy. Come at, um, they're, they're called all brummies. insults. That, it yeah. sounds like something someone in like Boom. grade school made up. Like an eight year old is throwing these insults around. Uh, <laughs> oh, Liverpool is Scousers, which doesn't yeah. make much sense. Yeah, Cockneys, East End of London. Yeah, probably a better one. Yeah. Um, what do you what what do you think would be a good insult for uh, for somebody from Burgundy? Uh, Ooh, Burgundian, I think, is probably a good, good question. One. Burgundian, because that is uh, <laughs> yeah, that's our next dev diary uh, for E four. And uh, since we have a a community ambassador here, um, I'm sure we'll have lots to talk about. But uh, they showed us the new Burgundia slash Lotharingia focus tree. Since you can now form Lotharingia uh, as as part of your, your mission um, and some more details on how the Burgundian succession is going to work, how it's going to affect the Empire. Um, what do you guys think about this one so far? Yeah, I wanted it's them to add in Lotharingia for a long time. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm totally on board with Lothring gear being a thing. I feel like this Dever Diary is like the opposite of the last one. There's a lot in it, but it's got a very narrow scope. And the last one was very, you know, was very small, but had a very wide scope. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Was, well, the Burgundy Succession was always some of this. It was always like a uh, it, was, it was this archaic thing. Everybody thought they understood how it, everybody thinks they understand how the Burgundy <laughs> Succession works. <laughs> everybody thinks they know how it works and almost nobody fully understands it. But <laughs> no, now it doesn't no. matter. No, it doesn't matter because they gutted the whole thing and put it a new system, basically, yeah. which is a lot more dynamic. And hopefully a lot more transparent, too, because I don't know about you, but I sort of just marry Bur- Burgundy and just hope for the best. Yeah, well, that, that was always my strategy. <laughs> if, if I'm playing as France, then the strategy is to become the Holy Roman Emperor and then have the Burgundian uh, succession fire, so you get all of it. Oh, um, I didn't know you got all of it. That's yeah, cool. it's mm-hmm. a really powerful like start for France. Um, but I suppose it's very hard to like rush towards getting membership of the HRA. Not really. It's honestly oh. all you need to do is ally and befriend like a few of the electors, and then you just yeah, you just wait you, for the dude al- to die. Al- yeah, okay. a- ally, ally, and um, uh, pulling an alliance and a uh, royal marriage gets you a lot towards a vote. And yeah. then you just got to improve relations or throw some cash at them and you'll pretty much get it. Okay. I don't know. I'll have to nice. try that at some point. I'll definitely try it. <laughs> Be, before this uh, Emperor edition comes out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, pretty sure that, that, that strategy's on. gone. Mm, I've, yeah. I've seen some weird Burgundian inheritances. I think I saw Hess get it once. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've seen quite a few of like bordering yeah. little Rum Province minor states get it quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, there there's um I, I mean there there's a a progressively less likely series of events that will happen and uh at the at the bottom of the event that event is the gist of it is basically yeah no anybody anybody <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, HRE. Just misc. Like okay, well, it didn't go to Austria, didn't go to Spain. Burgundy didn't. Uh, Bur- uh, the Burgundians didn't stay independent. Didn't go to France. Uh, okay, somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm interested in. Like, doesn't matter like, anymore because that's gone. If you're Spain, I, like, how do you how do you get the Burgundy? I didn't quite understand how you would so, do that because I always like the idea of getting um, the Spanish Netherlands. I've never played as Castile before, so <laughs> I've never tried that. How many hours that's- have you got in this game? Uh, well, let's pull up Steam. <laughs> I mean, that's the same thing with me, too. Like, I almost never play as, like, the recommended nations in EU4. I always pick some weird uh, little... 2,711, and then plus some more on the uh, the beta branch. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. I think that's yeah. probably so, so enough three, for you to 3, have 000. tried them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find me personally, like for whenever I'm playing basically any game, if the game isn't just like whipping me into the ground yeah. without with 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 without any, you know, a, a thought or remorse for my well-being, I'm not enjoying myself. I really like <laughs> a game to be beating me the hell up. Yeah. If I'm not yeah, struggling and if I'm not yeah, challenged, my, my, I'm not having fun. My first campaign of EU3 and EU4 was as the Iroquois. Like my 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 <laughs> yeah, you're, for, saying, um, you're a masochist. It, well, it's not yeah. it's not just that. It's also like I like history already happened. Like I already know what happened in vanilla history. Like I don't like playing as Great vanilla Britain history. in <laughs> exactly vanilla, vanilla. Un- unmodded <laughs> vanilla history. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I like I don't like playing as Great Britain in Victoria too because it's like if I conquer the world, it's like. Good job. They already did that. Like, I want to do something that's never been done before. So that's yeah, like, usually I, why, I, yeah. I've never played as France. I've never played as England. I've never played as Castile. Uh, a lot of those suggested majors that the gates popped up at the bottom when you started a game, I've never played as. But I've played as like every single OPM on the map, basically, just because <laughs> I like doing weird things. and yeah. I like the challenge. Yeah, my, just, my first ever campaign was as England, but this was back during the time when um, France and England started the game at war with each other uh, yeah. for the Hundred Years' War, and good lord, I restarted that first ever campaign dozens of times, and I finally got the win. Um, and then, like a couple of updates later, it was like, oh yeah, now they start a piece now. I was like, yeah, I have, my I, life I have in still two pieces. Never, <laughs> I've still never been able to win the Hundred Years' War as England. I've tried a few times, but uh, yeah, I've never, I never seem to be able to pull it off. It took know, major I, amounts of cheese. Yeah, yeah. I, I know there's cheese ways to do it, but uh, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, spamming mercs. That's a good I, one. I'm still quite proud of my second ever EU4 campaign. I played as Bohemia, who was in the Holy Roman Empire, so I called the, the campaign Holy Roman Rhapsody, because nice. I'm, I'm a Queen <laughs> fan. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, this is going back a long time now. Yeah. The other thing I really like about the those these Burgundian slash Lotharinkian missions that I found kind of amusing is that they're like heavily Charlemagne themed. Um, yeah. With, you know, you've got like the invade Lombardy with the Iron Crown and, and King of the Franks and all this stuff, because that mm. was the last time that they were important. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, that's how far back they have to go to be like, we're going to recapture the glory days. Like, France. Oh, I go God. back to CK2. Yeah. It's like, like a long like days of like 30 years time. In chat now. Absolutely yeah. fuming. Yeah, like France and, and Germany have like more recent uh heydays that they can harken back to but for burgundy it's like yeah we're gonna reform lotharingia you guys remember lotharingia <laughs> it was a <laughs> while ago but it was things were going pretty well for us for a second there people so, really like this uh this mission tree too it got yeah a pretty good response yeah, oh, yeah i quite like it interesting one i mean there's not too much uh overpowered stuff um it just yeah it's Nicely laid out. The artwork is phenomenal, especially the uh, English oh, yeah. Alliance one. That one, <laughs> like these ones, are a little bit blurry. You can you have to really like look at it to see what's going on. But this one is like boom in your face, English. You know what's going on here. You know uh, what I quite I like, like about it? I love how backward it is. <laughs> like, well, if everyone else is going through the through the um, <laughs> through the Renaissance. So you go like, oh, chivalry's not dead. You know, it's like Bretonia from like Warhammer. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> For the lady! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's basically how it's going to feel playing like a lover in gear now. Oh, yeah. No, that's, nice. that connection is now never going to be broken in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Burgundy yeah. is now forever going to be led by a little new anchor. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, but lady. And, you <laughs> so know, like French impression. Don't kill me, please. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, Did you say it's a Bretonian of... invention? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not offensive, it's Bretonian. <laughs> well, and like, speaking of masochism, it seems like this is going to be a really hard start now, especially if you try to go the stay independent route. Oh, or yeah. like you piss off the HRE and France. It's like I don't even know what you Oh yeah. What you what you, do you, you do at that point? Do you ally the Ottomans? Like <laughs> restart until you get a good roll? I guess. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, like it just seems like it's just gonna be a, a two front war against two like vastly more powerful countries. I think that that's the idea though, is yeah. that that should be the outlier. It should not be it should not work that way most of the time. Right. Yeah. I will Although, say though there are some things in here that are quite powerful. The ability to just like, oh, France, you know, like a lot of your power is made up from your vassals. Yeah, um, yes, they're now them. mine. That, that that's powerful. Be, that'll be game changing for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really th- interesting system. Like being able to, you know, k- take people's vassals from them is something I want to see kind of expanded on. Yeah. I mean, if you think like during the quite a few wars in history, it's like the way you beat a bigger opponent is you convince his little people to join your side instead of his side. Like that'd be it'd be super interesting so, if they expand. So on you it. can you can basically be like as Burgundy. There's France, and then there's the cooler France, and you're the cooler France. <laughs> Burgundy has <laughs> always been the cooler France. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. I like um, it. You also keep your re- revolutionary flag because I once played a game where I was, you know, Burgundy into France, um, and I was like, yeah. okay, I'm going to go revolutionary now. I'm going to have Napoleon, and right? I, and I got the revolution, and it was a fucking Belgian flag flying over <laughs> top of it. <laughs> oh god! Just I, I prefer there actually be no revolutionary flags to to what we've got because they nah, are gotta have all a tricolor terrible. For France for sure. Everybody Dude. needs their tricolor. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would, even I would in like the modern some... day, tricolors are just boring. Sorry. Yeah, I agree I, with that I, one. I do Unpopular think it would be nice <laughs> if you could customize it, like because the, the, the functionality does exist in the game. Yes. When you were making a, a, a custom nation, you get right. to make your flag. It would be nice if you, you know, put some limitations on what a, uh, the, the flag could be to be able to make that. But, I mean, I understand. It's just, it, it's another thing. That would be another thing to add to the pile, and Emperor is already a big update. Yeah, it's fairly hefty. Let's I mean, I'm fine with it as long as it's big and good flags, to be yeah. honest. I'm still on my crusade to get a Chartist flag to be the yeah, English revolutionary one. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> uh, anything Boogie else? Chat. 
get that sorted. Go on. <laughs> you, you'd love the chartist. Look up the chartist. You'd love them. Anything else about uh, E4 before we uh, move on to our next dev diary? Uh, I'm just curious, what, has any of this changed what your first country in Emperor is going to be? Like, who are you going to play nope. as first? Still Bohemia? Bohemia. The, the Definitely Bohemia. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still... Everybody, I'm st- everybody wants to play as the Hussites. Yep. Yeah. I want to play as the uh, Dithmartian. So I want to turn everyone into a peasant and then embrace the Hussites. That'll be oh, cool. See, w- w- the last time I played Dith Martian, I only played them because they one of their national ideas is increased uh, uh, pirate pirate efficiency. So I went from <laughs> Dith Martian to Ireland, then colonized the Caribbean and became German pirates and nice. stacked as much piracy as I possibly could and just stole <laughs> the world's cash. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, one, of most, one of the most fun playthroughs I ever did was German Pirates of the Caribbean. Nice. <laughs> that that sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This has probably changed my, uh, you know, I was probably leaning towards playing Castile first, but I probably, now we yeah. know how we're going to I'm probably works. just going to straight up go Austria, just to, just, I just want to yeah. do all the Empire things. Well, see, really I, see... You can still do that as Bohemia, you just have to steal the electors. Yeah, that's so. true. The, the, yeah, there's a few countries that I definitely want to play as, and they're all in and around the empire. Um, yeah, Burgundy, Austria, Bohemia, Dithmarschen are like oh the the Pope. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, every there's a lot of people who want to play the Pope because there's a lot going on down there that where there didn't used to be a lot. Just the the Catholicism rework in general is going to make Catholics much more interesting to play than they were before. Where in the old version of the game, the fewer Catholics there were in the world, the more beneficial it was for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Which was sure. very weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, and all the new government reforms are going to gonna make things oh, yeah. awesome for theocracies. You can actually be a battle pope. Yeah, well, um, battle pope's just like the best kind of pope, really. Yeah, mm. of course. Objectively. He doesn't have that hat for no reason. I have. Yeah, I, mean, I actually it commands authority. <laughs> it hasn't been updated since Mary Nostrum, but I was working on a mod called Battle Pope, where you could basically militarize the papacy and turn all of the holy orders into like space marine chapters. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. there are like the the Teutonic wolves and the Livonian angels. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I might. I might update that again. That's well, I, I always try to do it as a yeah. vassalize for knights and protect them because they're like my little yeah. babies, you know, you're like uh-huh. in Cyprus too, mm-hmm. and hopefully form Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah. So but Stilmar, don't don't form them as a client state with our capital in Cyprus. Otherwise, it's going to be um, instead of you know it being called like the Holy Land or whatever, it's going to be Holy Mashriq instead. If you take <laughs> the Holy Land, yeah. it's oh, just yeah. awful. Yeah, but, terrible. Yeah, I mean that's just a problem that you can't create client states in in uh, other continents, which is a bit weird. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, Stellaris, we got a quick dev diary on some changes that are going to be coming to um, the next patch for federations, um, including some changes to how how favors are going to work. Um, you can actually use favors to uh, increase acceptance for passing federation laws, not just in the uh, the galactic community, which is... No longer, you can no longer take over the galaxy by selling hot pockets anymore. Um, that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> the update that uh, that made it so that you can only spend ten per ten favors per empire per resolution. I think is how yeah, it. That's, yeah, how it it's, it's still very broken in multiplayer because you basically just give favors away to. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In, in RMP, that is completely banned. If you do that, then you just go. Away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, in Stellaris in general, well, basically any paradox <laughs> game that I do a community game on, there's usually uh-huh. a short short list of custom rules. And Stellaris, it's usually involving you know what you can and can't not do in Federation wise. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I recently played like a like a. Uh, a game of Hearts of Iron Vanilla that had no rules, and it was just an absolute shit show. Um, yeah, I, I think for most um, for most Paradox games, you do have to have a, a set of rules because they're at, at heart these games are single player focused, 
And when you yeah. put it into multiplayer, some of the mechanics that you would generally not be able to do with the AI, doing it with another player is, I mean, it just opens up for exploits and abuse. So yeah, just yeah. I mean, it depends, need on, to have rules. it depends on who you're playing with. Like I have oh, a yeah. small Imagine. group of like real life friends who play multiplayer Stellaris and it's like, okay, we're going to have to see each other in person again at some point when the whole like apocalypse thing is over. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, just don't be a dick and then, you know, you won't get hit. You know, that's, that's how it's going to work. So, mm, yeah, um, I just try and encourage like, you know, people who are <laughs> bad at the game or people who don't try very yeah. hard to play my multiplayer games. I remember one time we had a person who came in and cheated and I was like, Oh no, you've joined a game filled with idiots on like the chapel <laughs> discord of all places. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, and then cheated. You know, it's, it would be like going into like a like a children's crash and just punching all the babies. <laughs> That's what you've done. <laughs> That's what yeah. you've well, That's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if winning is that important to you, yeah, you might want to. Uh, it was yeah, funny. It was very funny. You got caught in the act. I think he was playing like um, the, the first worst part. He was, we were playing Kaiserreich, and he went Pelly. So that was always that was a big red flag already. <laughs> You know, yeah. this, this person is clearly a psychopath already. Yeah, yeah. And then he spawned in, like, had an event. He spawned in, um, uh, <laughs> like, it was an event that spawned, like, a number of paratroopers and gave, like, transport planes. So we looked through the event files. It was like, why are all your troops called, like, you know, the American Flying Squad and stuff like that? And why have you got 8 million <laughs> transport planes? It's like, oh, I'm oh, just really no. good at industry. I haven't played Hearts of Iron 4 in a long time. I'm still Hearts of Iron 3 bad myself. Oh, really? See, I, I can never Hoy, work it out. Hoy is not really my thing, though I do like Kaiser Egg for its, like, it's a very plausible alternate history, and I do love me some plausible alternate histories. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mostly play <coughs> Hoy 4 with mods at this point. Yeah, um, I think I don't think this most is, people this... do. <laughs> I don't think there's a paradox game I don't enjoy more with some mods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's a good point, actually. I love it with many, even CK two. Like I do love mods. the games, and I think them being made better with mods is it's not something against the games. It's something like for them. Um, yeah, yeah. That they're so open to being modded. Um, mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, I, have so I don't think it's anything against game. them. It's it's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the one other little thing we got in this dev diary is the uh, the joint operations, which are going to be kind of like cooperative events that federations can kind of pursue a goal together, which I think is cool. Hmm. It makes it so being in a federation isn't just, you know, I'm going to set, we're all going to send our envoys and then eventually we'll unlock a bonus at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's going to be really cool. That'd be pretty in a multiplayer for sure. Especially yeah. like how it says, you know, individual members can kind of sabotage it for individual gains. And then, you know, that could cause tension within the Federation. So mm -hmm. that sounds pretty cool. Um, but the biggest news of the week, probably, and I think Lambert and I had a very similar reaction to this, is that uh, they're adding a new pop type to Imperator, guys. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, a new pop type. Holy shit. Like, I yeah, have, I haven't it's... played Imperator since uh, it came out. So. Oh, I've got the you wrong should... dev diary oh, open. Oh, yeah, definitely <sighs> check it out. It's changed so much. It's actually a really fantastic yeah, it, game. It's, it's, especially if you haven't played since launch. Like, it is very, very different at this point. Mm. Uh, Let me just pull up the correct dev diary because uh, I've got the wrong one open. My apologies. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. Just specifically you causing so many problems today. <laughs> well, at least people Nobody can else. hear me when I'm fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have these kinds of technical issues on my end. Uh, yeah. The secret is, is just never take on any responsibility when you can't fuck up. It's my secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, feels I wish like I my my uh, my my work effort will just sit here on Discord, not streaming at all. <laughs> I sh yeah, I sh thankfully I the forums just, loaded for I, me. As yeah, well. but I, I'm really digging not being on the technical side of this and just being on the dick and off side. <laughs> That's wonderful, isn't it? It's great. I know it really is. Yeah. So, like, I I was streaming right up until we started this, so 
I was like, you know, I had all my shit going, my studio lights on, you know, all my stream, you know, stream slobs up and all everything I needed. And I just came for this. It's just like, I can just grab a beer and do what I do. What do you <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I rolled out a patch. I don't have to worry about map. anything. It's great. <laughs> just just <laughs> grab a beer and <laughs> here I am. Rose said there, I think I'm the only one that can say that, TJ. <laughs> She's not wrong. She's really not wrong. She's really not, no. Yeah. Like, uh. Before we go on to the new pop type, though. Yes. Phrygia is being renamed to something beginning with an A. Antigonid Empire, Antigonid Kingdom, Antigonia, uh, something yeah, like that. I think I, I think I like that because, like... Imperator is honestly the first time I've ever heard that particular state called Phrygia. Like, normally, the, if you look at, like, a map in a history book, it just says, like, Antigonids or <laughs> Antigonid Empire, or it just, yeah. it's called Antigonus. Like, um, so that, I, I like that change, I think. I'm, I'm very much in favor of that change. Yeah. I mean, people who study history don't call it Phrygia, so I'm not sure why so, the game so I, I, should call it Phrygia. You guys have played this game more than I have, so let me ask you this question. Yes. Can, it, 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 it is, can you do anything in the game other than just paint the map now? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so map is lots of more pops, so if you're a fan like me of just social engineering, um, oh, <laughs> you yeah. can just do that. It's wonderful. Well, yeah, let's, call, let's call it that. <laughs> <laughs> it's well it's like uh uh peter arheo has kind of referred to it as internal map painting is kind of some of the new mechanics they've added where you can you can sort of develop an urban core mm -hmm. and um you know figure out how you're going to use the outlying rural provinces to support that to sort of build up so it's not like it's not on the level of some of paradox's other games in terms of the depth with like domestic internal stuff you can do, but it's gotten way, way, way better. Yeah. Um, it was the Cicero know. update that changed yeah. just so much. So it's Great. like a few, few yeah. examples of things you can do, which are really good. You can change, like change your rural empire to an urban empire. For example, mm -hmm. I like converting to like Buddhism. That's quite fun. And then converting like large areas of the map to Buddhism. That's really, really nice. And sort of social yeah. changes there. Um, well, or you can have a migratory tribe. Or you can do like you know, you can start as the Saxons, for example, invade Britain and should, like have a migration that comes over and slowly converts, you know, England to a Germanic culture. It's there's so many like little social well, internal things it, you could do now. They took it from having a potentially infinite number of great families that didn't matter to now you only have a few and they matter a lot. Yeah, yeah, so, and they're so, color coded, which is the important thing. Yeah, the color coding is yeah the biggest part. So yeah, you actually do have to pay attention to like important family leaders within your country. Um, I still think that there's improvements that can be made on how revolts and civil wars work, but we're getting some of that with Menander. Yeah, revolts are changing in the next update. Um, yeah. I think we do need a little bit more information on how those work before we can say for sure whether like this is it, this is perfect, but. Um, I'm I think still just one of my favorite things is um, you get a really you, you play as a kingdom, you have a son, and you can name that son Lambert, and then say two hundred years later, your your population is doing fine, you're winning your wars, you're doing you're in a pretty solid position. You'd be like, you know what? The reason we're in this situation is because of Lambert. So we're going to make Lambert a goddamn god. And we're gonna deify him, and then forevermore, you can God. do the Upman yeah. of Lambert, and that—I mean, just who wouldn't want to do that, really? That's just yeah. I I <laughs> just recently started my first major game, digging into um the last update, and uh, I'm I played as who's the little Greek miner that's on the south western coast of Iberia. Like kind of just west Emporion. of the Strait of Gibraltar, yeah. Oh, I start uh, next to um, Gibraltar. A yeah, Greek it's, nation it's, down there. It's not one I had ever heard of before, but they're the westernmost Greek state on the map. And uh, yeah, I like made a temple to Demeter, and then like c built it up to be like the greatest holy site in the entire Hellenic world. And yeah, oh, it was nice fun stuff. 
Um, yeah, last time I played, I just abused the rating mechanic into the ground because it didn't, <laughs> it didn't, I don't know if it still works that way, but it didn't tell anybody when you were rating them. So I was doing a big community multiplayer and I would just send my, <laughs> send my ships to every single province on the coastline. Just be like, steal, 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 <laughs> and just yeah. bring hundreds of populations back down to, I think I was, uh. I was a Greek state somewhere. I don't even remember what it was, but just steal hundreds of pops, bring them in, and everybody got off the ship being like, okay, here's a new set of clothing, and here's your new deity, and you are now a citizen. Congratulations. And they'd just be perfectly happy, and every just, just like, okay, yeah, well, uh, here's your shirt, here's your sigil, here's your shirt, here's your sigil. And because it didn't, it didn't tell anybody when you were rating them, it, every, every once in a while, so it'd be like, wait, how does this city have 20 less pops in it now? What happened? I'd just be sitting there going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there used to I be mean, a bug in it where you could, when you were slave raiding someone, if you just clicked fast enough, it didn't like register uh, the first you, click oh. and let you just steal every <laughs> pop. Uh, that's thankfully been fixed, though. So Yeah, you, well, and now you can't just... I mean, for one thing, there's no mana, but you can't just like spend mana to zap people and make them Greek. Now it's like, yes, mm-hmm. you actually have to wait for them to assimilate over time. So, which is yeah. something that is changing in the next update. Um, so if we want to go, uh, should we talk about pops? Uh, the, the new pop yeah. type yes, first. Yes, yes. Nobles. Yes, uh, yeah. So yeah, we're getting. They're going to be uh, very hard to keep happy, but also very valuable when it comes to wealth. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you want to keep these dudes happy. Um, Which is like, nobles in in a lot of games work that way. Like, it made me think of Dwarf Fortress, where it's like, they can give you potentially huge benefits, but they're a giant pain in the ass to keep happy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love (laughs) Dwarf Fortress. I'm I'm fairly sure in my multiplayer games going forward, I'm going to give people score for the amount of nobles they have. Purely because, like, it's going to be a pain in the ass to have them. Uh, So, if you have them... You're doing pretty well. I like it. Yeah. Uh, They're mostly going to be in uh, the capital. Um, Some buildings like the the court building will uh, will increase the desired ratio and happiness of nobles. So that sort of makes the court building something that you would actually build instead of something you completely (laughs) ignore. Yeah. So that's good. Making some of the buildings a bit more desirable. Um, Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just interesting to get another pop type into the game. Yeah, so I actually love the, the idea of, of having um, you know nobles in Rome, but you have to you know sate, you have sort of a patrician class. Yeah. I don't know if you ever yeah. played um, uh, like Caesar. Um, oh, I love Caesar! Oh, it's a wonderful game. A- any of those like old uh, old <laughs> what was a company that made it? Tinted Tilted Mill. Sierra. No, it was before Sierra was a publisher. I think wasn't it? Was it? Um, yeah. Let's look it up. Oh. I guess I could. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Impression Games and Tilted Mill Entertainment. Impression Games. That's it. Oh, my goodness. What a yeah. wonderful set of games. But in Caesar, you had like a sort of, uh, you had the patricians that basically got you all your money, um, but they were a nightmare to please. But, tax um, them into the ground. Ta- oh, you tax them right into space, don't you? Like, amazing. Oh, yeah. Sierra <laughs> was the parent company. Mm-hmm. Definitely yeah. worth checking out their games, especially uh, huh. uh, Emperor Rising. You can pick them up on GOG. You yeah. can, yeah. I think the whole lot's on GOG now. Yep. Because yeah. it is, in fact, a good old game. It, it is. It really is. Yeah. It, really good, is. Yeah. it suits um, the platform down to the ground. In fact, um, Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom even has multiplayer. So if you've got a group of friends who fancy playing a, an interesting game where you're basically playing city builders multiplayer, yeah, crack right open. Get on Game Ranger and, and get that I do love some economic warfare on my friends. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> 3,300 3, years of classical Chinese history. I already like the sound of that. Oh, it's, yeah, it's well worth checking yeah. out. Yeah. So. Um, prior warning, though, it was made in um, the 90s. Uh, so the voiceovers are. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, well, they're yeah, not. They're um, <laughs> they're, um, yeah, they're. Uh, they're uh, they're what people uh, in in the nineties thought in the West thought Chinese people sounded yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> maybe a bit more socially acceptable to do that sort of voiceover in the nineties. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a little bit. Um, it's a bit command and conquer generals. <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> Reminds me of a really quick anecdote. Economic warfare. My last EU four multiplayer game I did. I was playing as Venice, and I very quickly ran out of things to do with money. 
So it was literally sitting on like hundreds of thousands of ducats worth of cash with nothing to do with it. So at one point I paid one player 20,000 ducats to attack another player. And then I subsidized that player into fighting the war. And then I PM'd both of them and told them I would each I would pay them each 10,000 ducats if either one sacked the other one's capital. Just to watch <laughs> it happen. <laughs> That's amazing. It's amazing. You're like, basically, yeah. Those are the kind of things I threw 50,000 ducats away just to watch two people fight. Those, <laughs> are, <laughs> those are the kinds of things you can do in multiplayer that I wish you could do in single player. <laughs> yep. Definitely. It's what makes Paradox yeah. games so fantastic while you're players. You can do shit against like that. Oh, yeah. what was great is during the entire war is the person I originally paid uh, kept like who was constantly in chat going, how is he so rich? Where did he get all the money for these mercenaries? I don't understand. <laughs> um, yeah, bringing it back to Imperator. Yeah, uh, bringing it back. Sorry, I just had to tell that story. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's, that's great. This, this no CB cast is very uh, accustomed to tangents. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's no yeah, problem. Yeah. Uh, See, a cultural happiness is something that's being added uh, Mm. where specific cultures within your empire could be more or less happy. um, And it it kind of affects um, it's affected by the new integration system. Um, Lambert, I'll let you (laughs) I'll let you lead the way on this one, because I I, I did read this dev diary, but I think you probably have absorbed it more since you did a video on it. Yeah, the. The big change really is instead of just painting the map in your culture color, um, now you're going to be able to integrate other cultures. That's right. And yeah. it's it was hinted at, I think, a little while ago that cultures are going to have their own specific bonuses as well, perhaps. Mm-hmm. So it would probably benefit you a little bit to, you know, Instead of just saying, oh, you're all Roman now, to be like, okay, you can keep your culture, we're, we're just going to accept you. Another, yeah. another fun thing you can do with it as well is, um, say, you know, Carthago de Lenda Est, you've gone, you've burned Carthage to the ground, and you, you're really salty about what Hannibal did in an alternate timeline that didn't happen <laughs> in your game. Pun intended. Um, so you're going to make sure that all of the Carthaginians, uh, all of these Punic... Um, undesirables, uh, they're not allowed to be citizens or, or free men anymore. They can be slaves only. So you can just say, okay, the Carthaginian culture, if you're this culture, you can just be slaves. And mm. that's super evil and it's totally what the Romans would have done. <laughs> yeah, it. that's the thing. I hope that Rome gets these bonuses. I, you know, I quite, I quite like the idea of both playing a sort of multicultural empire, like, I don't know, be uh, Persians or... Yeah. Um, the Greeks, um, uh, you know, especially the Eastern dynasties. But also, if I'm playing Rome, I want to make a desert and call it peace. You know, I want, to, I yeah. really want to. Well, yeah. it seems like it's going to be a choice now. Like, you could make everybody Roman, but then, like, you know, I played a game as the Kimbri where I migrated and conquered um, basically the area around Genoa, like the north uh, western part of the Italian coast. But then eventually I was so outnumbered by Italic Pops that I had all these revolts going on. And it would have been nice if I could have just been like, all right, you're cool. Like, <laughs> you don't yeah, have to yeah. learn to speak German. We're, it's, we're fine. You guys are, you know, you, you guys are fine. Uh, we'll keep <laughs> we'll keep the good jobs for us, obviously. But we'll 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 integrate you into our empire. So. Yeah, you're basically just seven yeah. Germans, right? The Italians. My new empire. Uh, to, yeah. to make it so that you don't just want to like integrate everyone and make them all just happy and and pleasant, um, it will also uh, reduce um, your own culture's happiness by five right. percent for each other culture that you've added to your, I guess, pantheon of cultures. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is even, interesting. Uh, even today, the, you can see that when rights get extended to more groups of people, the people who already had those rights sometimes get upset. Yeah, the yeah. Funny thing is, the, the people who are given the rights also get upset by that same five percent, but they yeah. lose the negative unhappiness for being a part of the non-happy group in the first place. So, yeah. uh, I guess so, that so works. It's a, it's, a, it's a net benefit, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like I say, you you don't want to integrate too many cultures, otherwise you're going to be uh, having quite a lot of happiness problems with your own primary culture. 
Yeah, uh, but there are bonuses system, right? that you can do to you know get your primary culture happiness. At the end up. of the day, for me, anything that allows you to actually have to manage your empire and not just paint the map is a step in the right direction. Yeah, okay. no, I hundred percent agree. What I'm, I'm wondering is be- because in EU four, what you can kind of do is you know you can integrate or you can accept. You know, if I'm playing as a German nation and I conquer a bunch of stuff in the east. I could like accept Czech culture and then convert a bunch of like nearby related cultures to Czech culture because it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if this system will let you do that where it's like, okay, I don't want to accept all of these Gauls, but like I'll accept Helvetian culture and then I'll make all of the rest of the Gauls Helvetian rather than making them Roman. And if I there hope any so. benefit to doing that. Yeah. I really hope so. Um, because yeah, that that does kind of worry me as well. There's um, there's a lot of cultures, and yeah. I think it was it was either going to be you can accept a culture group or you can accept individual cultures. And I think if you're accepting individual cultures, there's some that just have so few pops in it yeah. that it's not worth it. Um, and a lot of those are tribal areas. Like, why would you ever accept a Deorsian when you can accept Macedonian instead? There's going to be a metric fuck ton of Macedonians. So accepting that culture group is going to be way more valuable than accepting, you know, a culture group with only 20 people. Um, yeah. Yeah. I quite like that, though. I uh, like, um, mm-hmm. you know, like all, not all cultures being created equal in that sense. It makes sense if you're like, you know, you don't really care if you accept any are angry at you, but you probably would care if like yeah. all of all of the uh, <laughs> Macedonians are angry at you. Yeah. Oh, we've no, also split up a bunch of the, we've also split up a bunch of the culture groups. So yeah. uh Gallic is no longer just chunky. The, mm-hmm. they've changed it into uh, a Gallic and a Pannonian group and also um a group that has like the, the Belgium area, the Menapians. Oh and the yeah, and that's stuff right, in. yeah. Um, oh. In the last update, they also split off the Illyrians as well from um, Macedonian, uh, from Hellenic. So they're like sort of a, a mix now between Gallic and um, yeah, that Hellenic. Makes sense. There's For a new sure. culture group in Iberia as well. Uh, there is a new, uh, I mean, the big one I think is, is the split to Persian culture group. This used to be absolutely colossal. And a lot of people were complaining about Armenian. Uh, being a part of the Persian culture group because it it's it's just not. Um, no. So having it split into you know the Iranian culture group which has you know Persians in it, uh, the Anatolian culture group for Armenian Pontic and stuff, and then the Caucasian group which is uh, admittedly a lot smaller, um, but there is like only three cultures in it, and there's I think it's probably going to be a good idea to if you're playing as one of these caucasian nations to okay we're gonna we're gonna stick together caucasians for life so the uh the, the albanians and i can't really con- that's that's a that's easy. a rough phrase to say out loud yeah no i, I noticed that as soon as i as soon as i said it um i'm, I'm just gonna Someone, backtrack and someone's say someone's gonna clip that mediums for life. for life yeah uh, in, yeah, in, no, in the podcast was... version of this is just going to be beep 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 yeah, yeah no, uh, that was it's it's a culture group in anatolia that oh fuck <laughs> I know, yeah. people who literally live by the caucasus mountains for life yeah yes uh, there we Th- go. those people um yeah yeah uh-huh uh, let's can we move on? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yeah, let's move swiftly on. Yeah, well they 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 also split up Scythian, which not a culture group, but it used to be a gigantic culture yeah. on the map and they've Sarkan is new. Uh Fisiagetian yes. is new. Yeah. Um, is Sar- was Sarmatian Sarmatian was in it, yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought uh, annoyingly, I thought so. um Scythia at the when the game first came out, um started as a Sarmatian. And all of their yeah. pops were Scythian, but like their, their culture was Sarmatian. It made no sense, and that got Is fixed. Is that just an oversight? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I think it was an oversight. Um, yeah. Something went on during development. Um, but yeah, also interesting. There is some. Um, is this Hebrews here, or there's some kind of Punic culture now um, in like the Bosporan Kingdom area, and I oh. don't know who that is. Like it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, it they are literally no, they're Hebrews. They're Hebrews. Is it really? oh, okay. Yeah, Hebrews. Yeah, 
which is yeah, it's, super it's interesting. really interesting how much detail they've got into in modeling the like Jewish diaspora of antiquity in this yeah. game because you've got I all these tiny little pockets of it. I didn't know there was like a, quite quite a substantial Jewish population in in that area. No, no, I knew about the, K- yeah. the Khazars, so, but they, I thought they were kind of just adopters of. Yeah, the- it's still heavily, heavily disputed how the Khazars actually converted to Judaism, or where they originally, you know, heard about it from. But uh, hmm. yeah, um, and also finally, we've also got uh, India being broken up, which is hmm. amazing because India, especially playing as Mario, there was just so so many pops of your mm. primary culture of anti that you were never ever going to be suffering from revolts and you very rarely saw Mauria explode because of it because there's yeah. just too much um you know true culture in your empire now that they split it up this much i think we're going to see a lot more interesting things happen in india which is um a, yeah it's a good thing also, please yeah. stop taking my words out of context. Oh my it's god! A, it's a very <laughs> British statement saying, "Oh wow, India broken up." That's amazing. Isn't it? <laughs> god damn the culture! It's a, oh whatever. It's more historically accurate. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, of these that's places true. Like, the same people. Well, we've got to grow our narcotics <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> we need indigo. Um, yeah. No, it's a, uh-huh. it didn't make much sense. But Bengali's sort of same. You know, it's, the uh, opium it's... won't harvest itself. <laughs> <laughs> See, you said that, and I, I just thought opium, one province minor. How will that, how, how that harvest? <laughs> same thing. Yeah. Uh, That's it. Yeah. yeah. That should be the achievement of conquering it's, India's Yaseni. So That's everyone scary. here is has taken part in the opium wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should modify. I I actually. I created a, a Crusader Kings 2 challenge, which was that you have to start as the easternmost character on the map, who's a count, basically, in, in Bengal. And by the end of the game, your realm needs to consist of only Iceland. And I should do a version of that for Imperator. <laughs> uh, like, there's some other smaller rules, like you could only hold land in two de jure kingdoms at a time. So you're basically kind of moving across the map like an amoeba. Yeah. And uh yeah, I should come up with an imperator version of that. Like start in Sri oh, Lanka. I, I and, love stuff like that. End in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Much of that oh, confusing so. it was poor Iceland. I mean, basically all lives there is like <laughs> Viking farmers and, you know, Irish Christian monks, and then suddenly yeah. gurus. Yeah. <laughs> gurus exactly. are here. This guy shows up with elephants and like yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In my, with three great waves of migration to Iceland, the yeah. Celtic monks and Vikings, yeah. <laughs> the Bengali Well, that was gurus. kind of the idea. Is like you would have to kind of go through every culture on the map t- as, as you made your way across. <laughs> you know, well, a migratory these... tribe could just like pack up, move down there, plop down roots, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're here. We're done." Like, yeah, you could yeah, probably yeah. do that within about ten years. Yeah, yeah. Imperator would make that probably too easy. If at mm. least if you had a tribal government. Yeah, the, uh, there was a player in my last multiplayer playing as Boja in uh, India who just packed up a bunch of stuff and conquered Scandinavia. So he had wow. a, a huge country in India and Scandinavia. It was <laughs> super weird. Um, anything else uh, that stuck out to you guys about this Imperator Dev Diary? Um, we, uh, they they up. said a lot about the, the cultural happiness and integration and stuff, but at the same time, you really do just need to get your hands on it and, and play around with it yourself to sort of understand exactly how it's going to change the game. Like I, that's that's the part I'm struggling Very with. It's like so. this all sounds really good. Let me play with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing about paradox games in general is that they're so complicated that there's no way of knowing how it's all going to affect the gameplay without you know, oh, the yeah. entire play, player base abusing the hell out of the system to see what happens. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. And uh, I think I have to end every Imperator Dev Diary, like Kefato Delana S with, please make form of Ultipet. Come on, I have mentioned it this year. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I need it. For sure. Um, yeah. Uh, we had a uh, very small teaser for Humankind this week, which we've been kind of yeah. talking about a little bit. Mm, I've been uh, drooling over that for months. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm very excited just to see what the amplitudes take on civilization is um definitely definitely Huge yeah so games. 
Uh, last week was the Byzantines. They announced the second medieval Civ, which is the English. Um, and their unique unit is the Longbowman. Uh, Loris, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about that being oh, glorious, just, glorious British weapon? The English, <laughs> the yeah. English uh, Ingr- unique mm. unit. Don't no, tell that stole, to a Welshman. It. It's a stolen weapon, but you know, may have better PR. So I guess they, they can get away <laughs> with it. Apparently. <laughs> No, it's yes. like it's like you made it for us. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a craftsman. <laughs> yeah, who invented it? I mean, the English did make some adaptions, so I think the Welsh longbowman I mean, was made out stealing, of stealing stealing things from other people's cultures is just like you know normal English behavior. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Tea. Uh, yeah. Tea, yeah. Uh, um, um, well, I, I you know, Lambert's from Middlesbrough, got, so opium, um, opium. So there's a big one up there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> same for Swansea in Wales, to be fair. <laughs> See, that's that's like advanced colonialism, because you have to steal the opium from Afghanistan and then sell it to the Chinese, even though they don't want you to. Yeah, yeah. yeah at so, least yeah. we paid the Bengalis. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I think... I um, <laughs> so so the, the difference, basically, I, I just go into the longbow a little bit, I think... Um, so yeah, the Welsh longbow were made out of weren't made out of you. I think the English made them out of you. In fact, I'm pretty sure the English made so many longbows out of you, but it was a massive you shortage across Europe as English were just importing massive you don't amounts say. of you. <laughs> but um, before then, I think we were, oh shit, oh, what's the quote? There was like an English duke, one of the border princes, um, who were like so dimiss- dismissive of like the Welsh. It was like, oh, we've got this stupid bow and it's really big and it's like oh it's made out of flimsy wood it's so crude and crap and then um there was own gondor's rebellion and um suddenly it it went so crap anymore (laughs) (laughs) it's like oh oh okay yeah no actually this is great and also we invented it yeah yeah Uh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) this is mine now i think it's yeah, go for it. Go ahead. But to be fair to be English, it did make some adaptions. You yeah. you was better than... I've completely forgotten the word that it was. Especially you, Gwent. It, it wasn't Caesar, Cedar, was it? Was it Ash? Because sure. I know... Like, I, I know that the you and Ash are always the two I heard brought up for uh, making bows know. out of. Not quite sure. Um, uh, I think it's interesting that their unique quarter is a stronghold because when I think of the English, I don't really think of land fortresses <laughs> as no. like th- their emblematic thing. Like I'd expect, yeah, it to be no. s- I, uh, I like, do actually. Well, it's were made out of elm. Basically. Elm, yes, yes, yes. Elm, right. that's what it is. Which is yeah. a great name for a tree. Just an elm. I like that it. is, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, like I know the Normans built a lot of fortifications after the conquest, but I still don't feel like that. That's something I think of as like emblematic of England is castles. You know, yeah. Well, I suppose I like it needs to be yeah. a building of some type. We've got the unit. It could have been a longbow, or it could have been some you know sexy naval ship. Um, but they went with the longbow. Uh, and yeah, then, I suppose or, when it was like England rather than you know. Yeah, well, there's guess. there's going to be an early modern era at some point, and I'm assuming there might be like Great Britain yeah, that yeah. you can transition into that has has all the naval colonial stuff. So, yeah, yeah, um, maybe something like uh, the Witten maybe have done a better job. Yeah, Witten. Uh, Don't yeah, know the, what the, it is. It's the, <laughs> it's where, where they. It's where the nobles all gathered to talk about laws and shit with the king. Oh really? Okay. That's, that's that what a went out. Thing I might have been pronouncing it wrong or getting the wrong word, but that's it. it definitely begins with a W. Anyway, um, yeah, that no, might you're have right. Been, yeah, it's yeah. The the Wittenagemot was the old Saxon assembly, basically. Yeah. yeah. If Did this the is before the Normans, then that would have worked. After the Normans, probably castles would have been their emblematic quarter. Yeah. Yeah, I think this yeah. is post post Saxon, right? Uh, yeah, it's interesting yeah. calling it stronghold instead of like castle. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, castle Maybe. might be like the default one, and yeah. then stronghold is the special English version. Yeah, so. yeah. Also, I agree more with Sianto than I do with Valagain. Um England, Great Britain, to the Empire of Man. Totally agree with that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, True Master is pointing out that the use of Stronghold might represent Western medieval castles in general, since there's only 10 civs per era on the map, and they might be using England to just represent, you know, the we- the Western Western Europe, as in, yeah, you know, France, England, and Spain, like far Western Europe, as opposed to Central Europe or whatever. So Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. It's just, yeah. This is the first medieval one we have, isn't it? So it's like... Well, the Byzantines were Byzantines, also of medieval. Course. Yeah, we had the Byzantines as well. Yeah, so I think I same. think definitely the Longbowmen is though the, the it's the correct choice for yeah the English well, because if, if you didn't pick that, everybody would be like, "What the fuck about the Longbowmen?" Yeah, but, yeah, definitely. yeah. I mean, but unless you were going to do Norman knights, I don't know what else you would pick. So I mean, they, the Longbowmen were sort of the, them. Their contribution in the Battle of Agincourt basically ended the age of night warfare in general. Yeah. Um, just, you know, just get stuck in the mud and get, you know, spit roasted by arrows. That was the... Oh, God, my words today. Look, I'm tired. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just completely wreck his shit up with arrows from longbows. It's super influential in the, the way that armies fought in this period. So, yeah, having it as the emblematic unit is... Totally yeah. fair. It yeah. makes sense. Like even as a yeah. Welshman, I can see that. So it's the thing that defined the English at that period of time, right? Yeah. Uh, True Masters asking in a chat about Old World. I've seen a couple people mention it. Um, I have played it. Uh, I actually have a preview up on IGN and three videos on the IGN YouTube channel uh, about Old World. If you're interested in my thoughts on that, it's very Civ Five. Like I feel like it could almost be like a Civ Five mod. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely looking Suddenly not to interested in at all. <laughs> well, it, it, like, it, I'm, I'm, de- five. I'm definitely interested to see how it shapes up because it's still in early access and, uh, you know, they have some interesting stuff. They have like some Crusader Kings light sort of character mechanics in it, mm. um, that could end up being really interesting. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm keeping an eye on it because, you know, I wasn't blown away by the version of it that I've played, but it's still pretty early in development. Uh, it's similar to Soren Johnson's last game, Offworld Trade Company, which was also um, the the first time press got a look at it. It was very, very rough compared to the final version. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not really passing a lot of judgment yet. Um, so, yeah, definitely something I want to keep following the development of. Yeah I, yeah, I could definitely mirror that sentiment. I played it uh, for a few hours yesterday, and uh-huh. I, I liked it, but I definitely thought there was a lot of room for improvement. Yeah, right. That's basically my thoughts as well. I played quite a bit as um, the Greeks. Um, maybe went about 50 turns or so. And I guess it, it has the same problems for me that Civ has. It's got some really interesting mechanics, like um, everything that they've ripped from... Uh, not ripped, that's a bad word. Everything that they've that is sort of like CK2-esque with the dynasties and stuff, I really enjoy that. Um, but like I say, my, my, my main issues with it is the things that it takes from Civ. But I'm not a Civ player, yeah. so maybe that's sort of okay. Well, and Soren was, he was the lead designer on Civ 4, which, mm-hmm. you know, is a lot of people consider it to be the last good civilization Yeah, game. definitely myself <laughs> included. Um, so I, and like, I loved Offworld Trading Company, so I like what he does and I trust him and, and I'll definitely be following the development of this. Um, you know, you, I'm not taking the fact that it hasn't grabbed me yet as any sort of indication that it's not going to be good. <laughs> I think it's just early in development at this point. So yeah, I think it's uh, very pretty. As That's well, big... I do like the artwork. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I think I do take a slight issue that I think the faction they call Greece should be called Macedon because it's very clearly the Macedonian Greeks and not like you know. Oh yeah, the, the, uh, the first thing I did playing uh-huh. as Macedon, uh, except playing as the Greeks, was renaming uh-huh. the capital city from Athens to Pella. Yeah, there you go. Like the, yeah. our king, uh, the, the the ruler we start with, it's it's Philip the second, the guy who was not Athenian at all. So why why is no, Athens uh, is Athens hated sense. him actually? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely hated him. Um, yeah, there was wars between them, but yeah, totally. He's whatever. Yeah, 
Uh, so yeah, I changed um, the the name of the, the main city to Pella, and that that was made me a lot happier. There you go. I think what is not gripping me about it too much is the, the lack of like cultural scope for it. I mean, it's just Western Europe, well, Europe, and cent- is there even Central Asia? Is there like Persians and stuff um, in the game? There yeah, is Persians, Pers- yeah. Persians mm-hmm. in, yeah. Uh, there's there is a step faction. I think they're called the Huns. It's got uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar for yeah. the Persians. Yeah, uh, Nebuchadnezzar okay. is Babylon. Uh, Persians, I think it's. Uh, uh, there's the factions it's, it's there. It's either Darius or Cyrus. It's one of the two that I is always it's the leader. Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. Got Egypt, might be a bit more interested when they expand it a little bit. Um, to yeah. A bit well, and there's culture. a ton. There's a ton of others that you can't play as that just show up as barbarian factions in the game. Like yeah. you can meet the Gauls and uh, um, like the Vandals. Yeah, Visigoths and stuff. Yeah. The Danes yeah. were a big thorn in my side. Yeah. As Greece. Yes, uh, Valor Gain in chat, Hot Shepsuit, finally my girl gets credit, get wrecked, Cleopatra. Yes. Nobody <laughs> nobody actually remembers the actual good uh Egyptian queen who was actually from Egypt. Uh Cleopatra was a Hellenic interloper. Yeah. In uh, fairness yeah. to Cleopatra, she was like yes. the first pharaoh in centuries to learn Egyptian. Right. Like she could the speak the local language her, yeah. and not just Greek. So you've got right. to give her a modicum of credit. She didn't choose to be born to, you know, a Ptolemaic yeah. dynasty. Yeah. And she didn't bang Mart Anthony, which, you know, is probably. <laughs> really yeah, she banged, <laughs> you banged my boy well, Julius that Caesar and a bunch instead. Of other people too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be keeping up with the development of Old World for sure. We'll probably talk about it on the show uh, more in the future. I had something else relevant to say about it, but I can't remember what it is now. So we should probably go ahead and wrap up. Um, Lambert, <laughs> what have you been up to lately and uh, where can people find your stuff? Uh, so I am Lord Lambert on YouTube. Um, I recently started a uh, game uh, with the Bronze Age mod for Imperator, which just got updated to include all of Mesopotamia. And it's uh, really, really fun. That, I need that to mod check is that fantastic. out. It looks so cool. Oh, that's um, so cool. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things in that mod that I'm like, oh, how could this be reworked to the vanilla game? Oh, yes, I like this. And just lots of little things like that. Um, it, it'd be really cool if the uh, the devs like gave a bunch of mods a try and just like see what things they can you know pick and choose from them. Uh, so I've got that. I do uh, videos on uh, some of the dev diaries every week. I've got. Um, a series running as the Vandals as well. And uh, I think it's either tomorrow or the next day I'm going to be streaming the Old World um, as well. So if you uh, are interested in what we've just been talking about, um, I'm going to be streaming it there uh, in a couple of days' time. So uh, yeah, that and Stellaris Multiplayer. And uh, it's just good stuff. Channel's going really well recently, so I'm quite happy with it. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Uh, Loris, what have you been up to? Um, private commissions, <laughs> so nothing public, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just doing that. Working yeah. in Photoshop Minds. And uh, Ben, what uh, what have you been up to lately, and where can people find your stuff? Well, if you type Benjamin Magnuson pretty much anywhere, everything's branded exactly the same. So YouTube, Twitch, um, that's all That's all me. Um, on Twitch, I've been playing, uh, let's see, RimWorld, Rule the Waves 2, and uh, I last week I just played started playing Snow Runner with a friend of mine. So if you've ever uh, you know fantasized about what being a uh, a, a, a trucker in Alaska was like, yeah, oh. I'm on top oh, of that. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's surprisingly entertaining to play a game where you're a trucker in Alaska. So is I it is it like American Truck Simulator, or is it more like a tycoon game? It's more like it's more like American or Euro truck simulator. OK, uh, but, you know, without roads, you know, just swamps in in, in mountains and snow and shit like that. Yeah, those, those games are like surprisingly fun. What was that? It was a really good one um, that I played. I completely forgot my name of it now. You played oh, a sort of a the, Russian um, mud runner. Was it mud runner? You sort of um, basically play as like a Russian truck in Siberia and you just get yeah. 
Is it Mudrunner? Mud is it? Mud yeah, yeah, there's right, yeah. there's uh there's Mudrunner, and then they made a second one called Spin Tires. Spin Tires. That's what I was thinking. And then this yeah, one yeah. is Snow Runner. It's all made by the oh. exact same person, but the name oh. had to change for various legal reasons. Oh, okay. Interesting. I, I, okay, I'll definitely check that out. I've looked at Spin Tires, and it looked super interesting, but. At the same time, it, it was like 60 quid, and I was like, uh, It's up later. to four-player co-op, and it is so much freaking fun. I, 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 I it's that, really yeah, yeah. entertaining. Stream on that. Yeah, I do... Play. Like yeah, player, I right? do love uh, I do love those truck sim games. Sometimes, if I just want to like put on a podcast and do something kind of mindless for a while, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, oh, it, so like, like, like it gets really complicated in that though, especially when you're doing missions where it's like, okay, there's this two thousand ton uh, trailer <laughs> that's stuck in a swamp. Go get it. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, okay, you got to take a light truck with good wheels so you can scout out the path for us. I got to take something with like six wheel drive and you need something with a heavy winch. Okay. So now you're going to, you're going to have to winch yourself to this tree and then I'm going to winch to you and then you're going to winch to the trailer and we're all going to haul each other out. <laughs> I, this say, sounds you, like it you, would be a disaster immediately if I tried it, to play it, and it, nor, it normally is a disaster and it normally <laughs> within a few minutes, normally the plans go completely tits up and nice. somebody rolls a truck off of a cliff and then it turns into, okay, now we got to, we got to haul his ass well first we got to write him and then haul his ass up off this cliff oh shit i ran out of gas someone's got to go back to town and get a tanker and top us all off because <laughs> this is supposed to take 20 oh, minutes no. and we've been here for three hours oh no and it's, this sounds it's, a lo- it's a lot of fun to play with friends because it's just like a weird logistic simulator it's kind of like a, it turns into like a puzzle game with people yeah yeah game. it's That's great it. It's basically like sort of winching, basically, our, <laughs> especially in my player, right? It's in spin tires anyway. You sort of go through the mud. You always get stuck in that mud, and mm-hmm. you always yep. have to have your friend winch you out in some sort of <laughs> yep. convoluted way, and then you yep. fall off a cliff. <laughs> so yep. it's like it's great. It's wonderful. Nice, nice. Yep, that that's exactly that. Like another just real short tangent. I was playing with uh, with a friend of mine last weekend, and we were trying to just get to all we had to do was get to a pump and hit a button, but the pump was in the middle of a swamp. So uh, he got within to about 12 feet of it and got stuck. Uh, so I picked the lightest vehicle I could possibly find and then just floored it until I got to him. <laughs> and thank- <laughs> thankfully, he had a crane on his truck. And what he did was he extended the crane out as far as he could and then winched the front of my truck to his crane and then swung me around like a wrecking ball to get to the location. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay. That's, amazing. that's on your Twitch because I'm going to watch that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's on Twitch and uh, it'll be up on YouTube uh, today or tomorrow. Amazing. Oh, oh, that is, good. Yeah, go sub to Ben. Well, well the best part about it too is he didn't tell me what the plan was so i just got there he he attached his winch to me and then just did it so all of a sudden i was just flying that's amazing i tell you what this company should make a mad max trucking simulator that's what i want a fury road trucking sim Mm. oh yeah totally i would love that Oops, that's the next one. Oh yeah, uh, Larry actually accidentally put my twitter on the front of your (laughs) youtube link in chat um there's the youtube link alone (laughs) Um, I have nothing new that I can talk about. I don't think (laughs) I have, I have some very relevant stuff to the people listening to this podcast that will be going up fairly soon. Uh, very, very relevant, but I cannot talk about it at all yet. Um, so keep, <laughs> an an <laughs> keep an eye it's out com- for that. It's completely, completely um, unrelated. It's a grand strategy, but it's a really interesting tangent. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's, All of yeah, your tangent. reviews should have just wild tangents in them. It can be your brand. <laughs> yeah, 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 that would be. A, that, if my editors would let let me do that, that would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, like, yeah, like you know, it's like two sentences of game review, and then the rest is just like a tangent <laughs> about Norse mythology. So while I was writing this review, I thought maybe we could have a chat about Odin. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, you can check me out on Twitter at uh, AsaTJ. That's A-S-A-T-J. Yeah, uh, Ben, thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Loved having you. Um, Definitely welcome back anytime. For sure. Of course. Um, and then I think next week, if the timing works out, we are going to have our hail from the Imperator team. So Imperator friends in chat, um, be excited for that. Uh, as always, you can follow us on Twitch, Twitter, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast for no CB cast. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Oh, and goodbye. Of, of course we want to oh, wish- mind. Best of luck to Rose, who's yes. having a baby oh, yes. this weekend. Who is, yeah. 
actually creating and bringing another human being into the world this week. Uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Enjoy uh, being a parent. And uh, just preemptive warning, don't get too attached to sleep. It's just... just <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Insomnia right. is great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see Thanks you for guys. watching. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Take care. Ciao.